What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Going to be showing off Will Jenkins' third place Trevenant deck from the Toronto Regional Championships. Trevenant showed up in force at Toronto. I think there were only like 20 some players at the regional championships playing Trevenant. However, I think a dozen of them made day two and four of them made top eight with Will Jenkins having the top Trevenant placement at the Toronto Regional Championships. Ended up losing out to Night March on the whole. Night March taking the tournament by storm, winning the whole thing in the hands of Jimmy Pendarvis. But Trevenant did show that it is still a force to be reckoned with, even without Wally being able to obtain the turn one item lock. Item lock still very good in this format. The deck does struggle against Picaram, which was a top anticipated threat at Toronto, but with a lot of fighting decks showing up at the Toronto Regional Championships, Picaram did not end up at the top tables, which opened the door for Trevenant to do really well. Now, sometimes this deck can draw awkwardly, which is uh, some of what we saw in top eight with the deck just losing steam coming down the wire there. Looks like we're playing against the Zorak deck, which means that we're going to try to get an item lock up here kind of quickly and then just want to, yeah, let's get rid of this counter energy. And then we are just going to want to devolve with Espeon and that Miraculous Shine ability there. I already have two Phantom outs in my hand, so I don't really feel like I need to bridge it. I can just Juniper this hand and that'll be just fine. I'll attach my Psychic Energy to the active and we'll go from there. Now, we could attach to the bench, assuming that this active one is probably going to get knocked out very quickly. So I'm feeling like a uh, bench detachment is actually probably fine. And then we'll just Juniper. Don't really need to let loose us right now. I think that getting set up is a little bit more of a priority for me. So we'll just pass here with the Phantom in the active position. And then maybe if I find a uh, Dementia Valley, I can Ascension for free which would be very cool. My opponent doesn't have anything. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm not sure if I have set myself up in a way that I can now take advantage of that and knock that out. I mean, Trevenant doesn't really do knockout numbers against this guy. So I'm thinking that we're just going to get that item lock. And unfortunately, we just have to play a little bit slower than we would want to here. I could just get this. I mean, I can energy drive, I guess. Uh, but not for enough because I guess I don't have any double colorless energy or anything like that in the deck. So it's not happening this turn, guys. But that's okay. We're just going to get a Trevenant here. And then Juniper and continue setting up the deck as usual. Let's just go here, here, and Juniper. I don't think that I actually need my Wobbuffets down right now. I'm fine just going in like this. And we can see that the deck is just very linear. You kind of just set up Trevenants and hope that the Forest Cursed item lock is enough to stop your opponent from doing what it is that they want to do. The rescue scarves are fantastic for just making sure that you're able to stream Trevenant after Trevenant here. Sure enough, my opponent does have a Zorark. So they are going to be able to play this game and play in air quotes here. They are also getting an attack off, but Culver's for three is not exactly ideal. Uh, and trading away a double colorless energy means that the other cards in their hand were more valuable. So let's see here. I don't necessarily want to end, but Junipering this hand is like a little aggressive as well, though I also cannot afford to get rid of this guy. So it's looking like N is probably just the best case for me. I'm going to drop these guys here and then let's just end. Not going to get rid of that Espeon. We need that just in case. But I do need to find some Trevenant breaks here so that I can start to use, I guess, Silent Fear eventually. Though Tree Slam, actually totally fine, but I don't have enough energy on this guy to Tree Slam and have not seen a Dimension Valley yet. So we are going to just use Silent Fear, spread 30, and then if my opponent doesn't knock me out, 
then I am going to be able to uh, just rescue stretcher, bring the whole line back to my hand, and just lay them back down and continue going on. And that's what's so powerful about this deck, is once you kind of get the whole deal set up, then it just kind of runs itself. So consistency issues aside, the Rescue Scarf makes things very consistent because you don't have to find your super rod to throw the Trevenant line back into the deck. Earlier versions of this deck used to run Bursting Balloon and things like that. Yikes! He's going down. Used to run Bursting Balloon. Uh, that did more damage, put more damage in play, but it did make things a little more stressful as far as streaming your Trevenants went. And the whole line comes back to my hand that's just so good, right? I mean, now we just lay the Trevenants back down. No problem. And my opponent still is not able to use items, which is just very, very good. And I've got the Trevenant here, so I can Silent Fear for just one energy. I've got the D-Valley, which makes it so Silent Fear, just a single energy cost, absolutely incredible. Let's drop the Rescue Scarf down on another one of these, and I will gladly just probably end again. I don't really need the Juniper, end to six is probably fine. So we'll just do that, save the VS Seeker for something a little bit later. Enhanced Hammer is good, so I'm gonna wanna hang on to that. And what's crazy is I can actually bridge it for my Espeon EX should I decide that I eventually need that as well. And uh, I'm really a big fan of these of these Rescue Scarves. This is, uh, I feel like, the kind of missing ingredient that this deck really needed to be a top threat all along. I mean, Trevenant had been good for a long time, but I feel like this just makes the deck so much more oppressive. Uh, the fact that I'm never going to miss the Trevenant after that first one goes up is just very good. So my opponent is just gonna ace roll of the Bench Zerua and then parallel me, that's fine. Got the Dimension Valley in my hand. Uh, it's kind of annoying that they have double fighting on this Zorark, but also good for me because that means that Ace rolling the Zorark is going to be more difficult. However, uh, it does make it so that I cannot use my Enhanced Hammer, which is a little bit annoying. My opponent is uh, chugging through these Trevenants here, though. Would be nice if maybe I could find a counter catcher or something like that to slow my opponent down so that, uh, so that they maybe miss a knockout here somewhere along the line. Let's just continue evolving up. Uh, N is gonna be a good option as well uh, down here shortly. So let's see, it's probably not time to break the item luck and evolve yet. I'm gonna wanna do this a few more times, so let's just continue forward. We definitely are playing this D-Valley, that's for sure. And then we could just spread again. I think that's probably okay. Two, four, six, I mean, but the fact that we're just getting KO'd every turn is really bad. So I want to find, yeah, let's just play this. I really do want to find a counter catcher. That would be very good. So let's see if we can't end my opponent to four and find a counter catcher. I still have not seen one. It's a little bit disheartening. Would really help with this whole deal here. So. Let's just Silent Fear again. I think bringing up, I mean, we can't really bring up the reload. That thing's going to get knocked out here eventually. But it's fine. We'll just stay the course. I am starting to run out of Rescue Scarves. This is my last one in play. So when this Trevenant goes down, um, it's going to start to get a little bit sketchy. Though I am looking like, okay, I was going to say I'm going to be knocking out a Zerua here, maybe if my opponent doesn't uh, evolve, but they've got it. And a second trade, which is really good too. Zorak is obviously Trevenant's like worst nemesis here because of that dark typing and just the ease with which the deck draws under item lock because it could just trade every single turn. So finding the, uh, finding the counter catcher is going to be really really important here so that I can make my opponent force them to slow down a little bit. Fortunately, we haven't missed a beat as far as Silent Fearing goes, so that's very good. Um, I guess I could have like Lele'd for a Guzma or something here, but I mean, I've just started playing the hand down, so that's not happening now. 
Um, and then I'm almost at a point where Espeon is going to be the play. End of three is like strong, but hmm, okay. I think we might just need to draw aggressively here. How many verse seekers do I have down? Two, okay. That's uh, starting to get down to the wire here. So let's just throw that Espeon down and I'm fine just using the Juniper. Let's just get through this deck and see some more cards. We've got Trevenants, okay. But we did not find our counter catcher yet. So I do have Guzma in my hand, that's good. I could potentially use that to Miraculous Shine this next turn. Um, however, oh, the Riolu goes down, that's cool. I think maybe I should have used Lele to Guzma up. I mean, I guess you could like bring up the Lele. My opponent doesn't really have any good targets down. But if they don't ace a roll of this next turn, then that means I'm going to be able to Miraculous Shine with Espeon EX and take a couple of prizes here, which is really good. And the fact that I could do that for free with the, um, and do that for free with Dimension Valley out is really good as well. Uh, my opponent very intelligently is just going to get a single Zora and Riolu out here and just knock out my Trevenant though. So what we are looking to do is probably just bring up, I guess the Lele and then with Guzma and then devolve these two guys and then probably go back into the Trevenant and hope that that kind of works out. So my Let Loose is down. I really wish I had the Let Loose in my deck right now and it's gonna be Guzma Town here for sure. So let's bring up this guy. This is what we got going on. Still not able to utilize that Enhanced Hammer yet, which has been pretty frustrating. So it's all good, and we'll just Miraculous Shine, devolve both those guys, and take those two knockouts. Hopefully it makes it a little bit more difficult for my opponent to respond. However, if they are able to knock out my Espeon, it's going to be very uh, bad. That's just going to be the end of the game if they're able to do that. I don't think that they'll be able to. However, it's scary. They have a big hand. They have access to their items as well. As you can see, the enhanced hammer coming down. They've got a Zorark GX in their hand too. Should be tough for them to put together all the cards they need. However, uh, they do have their items, which is not something that I want. Next turn, it's going to be an end. We're going to have to end this guy down. Uh, hitting that enhanced hammer was really good for them because it means that I'm not going to be able to uh, retreat and attack. But they're just going to put that Acerola back into their hand now that they have that as an option. They can bring the Lele back up to their hand. And maybe if they have the Lucario, they might just have it here. If they have a strong energy and a choice ban. Um, they could just have everything that they need, but it looks like they're going to be a little short. 150 maybe, unless they've got Diancie in their hand as well, then that is just game. Uh, but they're just going to take the time to Verse Seeker, put all the cards that they need back into their deck, uh, and back into their hand. Now, unfortunately, they were not able to put Guzma back into their hand. I'm thinking that they probably want Guzma back because if they can... Um, if they can put Guzma into their hand right now, then they will just have game by being able to Guzma knock out my Espeon here later. So let's see here. We're under a lot of pressure to figure out the route here. Let's enhance Hammer, sure that. We're definitely gonna end. We definitely have to retreat. So let's computer search the Bridget and the Phantom and see. Yeah, Custom Catcher will be good. I can bring up that. Um, I mean, the Lucario actually is just like the best target, I think, to have in the active position. Um, then I don't have any sort of switch cards or anything like that in my deck. So we just have to hope that an end to two kind of sticks them here. Um, so yeah, I mean, kind of a wasted computer search here, but that's okay. I needed to kind of check my deck and make sure that my resources were what I thought they were. Okay, so 
that's fine. Uh, I guess I have to grab something, right? It doesn't actually matter, though, because I'm going back into the deck. Um, probably could have chucked the super rod back in, but I actually am not super into playing that quite yet. Uh, I'm fine with just drawing the super rod off of the end. Computer Search does thin my deck there, though. And here's the super rod. So that's fine. I guess I you know, could have done that sooner, but it means that I have an option to throw the Marshadow, maybe a Phantom. Marshadow, Lele, and Wob back into my deck, probably. Let's just chuck those things back in. Definitely want the Marshadow in my deck, the Lele. And I don't think that anything else really matters. So we'll put the Wobbuffet in, too. Unless there's a, oh, we'll put a Psychic in. Okay, and I think actually I just am putting two Psychics in the Marshadow back into the deck. That seems the best. Now we can retreat and just item lock and hope that this is going to be enough to buy me enough turns to win this game. Obviously, if my opponent gets like Guzma energy, it's game over. They're going to evolve up. Does that mean they have some? Oh my gosh, do they just have it in their unbelievable end of two? And they just, their one, two, three card hand is the exact three cards. Not even a trade required to take game on my SBN. So, yeah, that's the bad side of Trevenant, as you guys are seeing there. Zork is a bad matchup for sure, but what a draw off of an end of two. I can't believe it. That was uh, that was really devastating. So, oh well. You hope that the enhanced team or all that kind of like sticks them, but uh, you know nothing can save you off of a perfect draw off an end of two. So that was that was tough. Nothing more I really could have done there. Uh, it's just a rough matchup with your opponent mowing down your Trevenants turn after turn, and missing the counter catchers early was really bad for me. Wasn't able to bring up any targets on my opponent's side of the field to get them to miss a turn. Even if they just miss one turn of attacking here or there, it's going to be huge. They were able to attach double fighting as well so that they never had to deal with getting enhanced hammered either. That was like really, really strong for them. And then by the time that I finally was able to Miraculous Shine and pick up their Zorks with enough damage on them, they were just able to go in with Lucario's and take game. So, tough match there. We'll roll it one more time and see if we can't have a little bit of success here with Will's Trevenant deck. I will say, oh no! Oh no, guys, a Trevenant mirror. This is horrible, right? Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll certainly see how it goes. I think that I am just going to I guess with the Wobbuffet active, you yeah, no, Wobbuffet doesn't do anything. I'm not going to lie, I've never played a Trevenant Mirror because I almost never play Trevenant. So just a, a heads up that uh, we don't exactly know what we're doing here, which is all good. I do get the first energy attachment, which I think is big, so that should be helpful. We're going to computer search, and I think I'm just setting up here. I mean, we're going to be item locked soon. Uh, we're both going to be item locked. So that should be good. My, let's see, we need to get just as many items down as I can, I think, on the first turn of the game. And then we're going to be looking for that Guzma as the game progresses. But I don't have my Lele in deck. So that's not going to be an option for me. I only have one Trevenant break left in the deck, too. So that's a little bit sketch. Um, I might need to save. I can't really afford to save this hand because I need to play items down is kind of my, my thought. So not great, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I draw into my super rod off this Juniper and that would just be super dope. So we'll see here. Juniper, new hand. There's the Guzma. That's great. Enhanced hammer. This is all very good. And uh, I guess the Guzma and the enhanced hammer are not as strong without um, <laughs> an actual supporter in my hand or a Trevenant Break. That's cool. I feel like Tree Slam's probably good, but I don't actually know. And I don't have Rescue Scarves either. So, I don't know. Do we put a third Phantom down? I feel like I would want to, like, stagger these things eventually, but with only 50 hit points, I don't, I don't actually know. All right. This is going to be an adventure for sure. I do have a turn two tree slam. That seems very good. I'm also going to get the first Trevenant into play. 
which also seems great. But they're just going to attach an energy and ascension. So that's that's cool. Okay, uh, they don't have a whole lot going on, but little do they know, me neither. Right. So we'll just go here, and then I think it's just time for the D Valley. Yeah, because I got a tree slam and just spread that damage for sure. So I think that this just puts me at a stark advantage, even though uh, I don't have anything going on. The fact that I got the first attack off means a lot because now we're like almost winning the game. Knock out the Trav, 20 more damage to that Phantom there on the bench. It's just really strong for me. think that I kind of want to pinch that energy and just kind of see what happens here just in case I end up needing it. But taking that first knockout is really good too. Unfortunately, my Ace Trainer not going to work. Uh, unless I, uh, <laughs> not going to work unless my opponent gets ahead on prizes, which is not what it's looking like is happening here. They may just have to ascension for free. If they ascension for free, that's bad because then um, I'm probably going to be able to Guzma and start to attack with Trevenant Break. That might be the deal here. I actually just have game because I can, no, I don't have game. It's just very good though. Don't have game. I can Guzma, we'll put that there. I can't enhance Tamer, but we are gonna tree slam, knock that thing out for 20 more damage here, which all seems very good. Sure, yeah, let's Guzma up this guy. And then we've got free retreat with our mystery energy. And then I think that I am going to Mysterious Treasure. I don't think I'm ever going to be ahead, I guess but the enhanced hammer will probably be used less. And then I could, no, my let loose is not in here. So that's not an option. Let's just get a Trev break. Perhaps, I mean, is there any fear that my opponent actually knocks out this Trevenant this turn? I don't think so. So I think we just put a lot of pressure on by getting the Trev break out, which is a little bit of an all in play, not gonna lie, but it seems like the most advantageous right now. Just taking this knockout with the Phantom with the energy. They can go Trev Break here, which would be good for them. If they go Trev Break, energy, then they sign up here for 30, and then take out two Phantoms, which makes me really glad that I saved my uh, Ace Trainer just in case they end up going ahead. But they miss the Trev Break. They have to just put down a Wob, which is really tough for them because I just have it. Um, let's see here. We've got the counter energy. Don't need it. We're just going to tree slam, I think, right? No, he's got 60 on him. Yep, it's got to be tree slam. All right, tree slam. Take a knockout on that Trev and 20 damage to the Wob, going down to three prizes. And you guys can see how fun and interactive the Trevenant mirror <laughs> is, right? This is like a nightmare. Uh, not a matchup that I would ever want to play, but uh, wow, they could actually take the knockout on my Trev. So they're like not doing bad right now, but I think I just have game by using uh, Trevenant Tree Slam for knockout on this Psychic Week Wobbuffet. So that should just be it, but Good game to my opponent, nonetheless. Well played. Nice playing you there, uh, Mr. E-E-L-O-O-C. Uh, but yeah, so that's Trev in a nutshell. Trevenant Mirrors, not exactly bueno, but it's, uh, that is what it is. Will Jenkins, third place, Toronto Regional, Trevenant deck. Not the best deck against Pikaram or Zork but still a pretty good deck nonetheless. Pretty straightforward, you get the lock up and then you try to disrupt your opponent with things like custom or counter catcher and enhanced hammer to slow them down while you whittle away at their hit points and then maybe miraculous shine to try and win yourself the game. And an ace trainer, both very strong in the deck as well to limit the amount of cards that they have in their hand since they are more than likely going to go up in prizes quickly. You try to end them to low and hope they don't draw out of it like my game one opponent did. So that's it. Thank you all so much for watching the video. I'll drop the list in the description below as well as links to my Etsy store, Patreon, Teespring, FullGripGames.com. Thank you all so much to everybody who supports the store here, buying code, singles, all that. Much appreciated. Going to be at the Greensboro Regional Championships this weekend. So if you're going, go 
good luck and hopefully these videos are helping you to figure out a play for your own. Uh, thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell. Uh, check out all the links in the description below too. And my Twitch channel where I stream every single weekday, including today at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to be streaming the Fulgur Games Shop Tournament tonight, Expanded League Challenge. So it should be a great time. I'll see you guys there. Peace.